our weekly 30 minute workshop. My name is Jim Shelton from SD with Verify, and today I'm joined by Matt Sykes, another SD here at Verify. On today's workshop, Matt will guide us through the steps to deploy a Cube cluster on OVAs prior to 12.3. Newer OVAs already have multiple steps built into them, which makes for a quicker deployment, but if you're running an older OVA, this workshop is for you. All right, we're going to start out with a quick overview of our company and what we do. We'll jump into a live demo where, where Matt will guide us through deploying the Cube cluster on older OVAs. We'll pause for some Q&A and get those questions answered. During the demo, if you do have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel on the bottom right-hand screen. After Q&A, we'll re reward one lucky attendee with a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around and make uh, make sure to hang around to see if you've won. All right, quick overview of Verify. Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry-leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX recording, remote phone control, and change management. But today, we're going to be focusing on cube deployment. If you have any questions on any of the, of the other features, uh, we can most definitely take those offline and get them answered. Before we get started, we want to announce that Verify now has a service offering that provides managed consulting services to our customers. Verify's SE team will be engaged on a one-on-one -on -one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboarding, configuration, and system monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify SE to do the heavy lifting of report creation and generation. For more information, please contact us and we'd be glad to speak to you more in depth about this offering. All right, Matt, are you ready to take us into the wild with Cube? I am, Jim. Let's go. All right. Let me get my track here. All there we go. Be good there, bud. Yep, looks good. Thank you. All right, sharing screen two. Let's get this header out of the way. All right, there we go. Okay, hello everyone. Matt Sykes again with Verify here. Uh, as Jim just mentioned for us, today we're going to be um, deploying a cube cluster within Verify that predates our 12.3 OVAs moving forward. Now, the reason we are showcasing this, as Jim made quick mention to, is that the newer, um, we we released our CUBE offering um, in Verify 12.3. That was released on September 30th of 21, I believe. Um, so that OVA moving forward actually had packages built into it that the obviously pre, you know, precursory OVAs did not have. So what actually is that? The main package is actually going to be an FTP server package. Now, if you're familiar with our Linux OVAs or open virtual appliances. Um, they're Linux based, but they um, ha they have built in SFTP servers to receive you know, UCM CDR from the call manager. But the cube, when it comes to cube, unfortunately, it only delivers data CDR file transfers via FTP on port 21. So we didn't inherently have that loaded onto our package previously pr prior to 12.3, but now we do. So I just want to make quick mention of that. So what we're going to roll through today is we're going to roll through a an older, actually, I'm I've deployed a 12.2 OVA in one of my labs. I've upgraded upgraded to a, a more recent release, but it's still running on the older OVA, which doesn't have the FTP package loaded in it natively. Once again, the 12.3 OVAs are later will, um, but this one is going to be on the ones that are upgrading. So we're going to follow this knowledge base article a little bit, and uh, I did chat that out in the uh, WebEx chat to everyone. So if you want to go ahead and click on <clears throat> that link, I also send a, a report package link as well. We can talk about that later. But certainly, if you want to follow along with the cube setup and configuration KB off of the Verify screen, uh, website, that's what we will be walking through right now. Okay. So as I mentioned, um, which things we'll say here, some of the prereqs are definitely going to be you know, running Verify 12.3 or greater. I do have a shell lab right here. This guy I loaded up last night from a 12.24 OVA, as I mentioned, and I upgraded to the 12.3 that once so I could uh, take advantage of the, the cube offering that's obviously embedded in this release. So we're gonna use this lab. It's, it's um, 
completely uh, a complete shell. There's nothing configured as you can see. So we're actually going to walk through all of that right now. So once again, as I mentioned, you know, cube data transfers are only an FTP. So we first must load a an FTP package or an FTP server on our Linux OVA to be able to accept those files from the cubes. Once again, the 12.3 OVAs or greater have it uh, loaded um, natively, and this needs to be enabled. Okay. So first things, maybe the first question is, you know, like what OVA version are you running? If you think you may need to maybe redeploy on a newer OVA instance of Verify, or if you need to take advantage of these steps we're about to walk through right now, you can search, certainly reach out to Verify support and we'll be able to look at, you know, your download histories and let you know what OVA of Verify that you're running on or the most recent one um, as well, as, or if you kind of just know when you've deployed Verify, if it's been a post, uh, September 30th of 21, chances are you're on our newer uh, on our newer OVAs that actually have these packages loaded. Okay, so we're gonna kind of comb through this document here, um, follow some of the prereqs. The main big things are, I, I would say the big three that we're gonna kind of encompass, which the first one is, is paramount, is going to be the installation of the FTP service, which is gonna be, we're using VSFTPD. So we're gonna load that package and then run a, a script to change ownership for it. And this documentation has it all laid out here for us. Some prereqs, obviously, verify 12.3 with licensing or greater. Some cube requirements. Uh, FTP, once again, there are, you no, know, it is FTP for, for cube data. That's no way around that, unfortunately. We have uh, the new OVA setups. This is really, really straightforward just to go ahead and, and enable it because that FTP package is already loaded. However, we are going to be focusing on the upgrade from an existing or prior 12.3 release. So here are the packages right here. And we're gonna go ahead and install them onto a shell this, this shell server that I've got right here, I'm gonna pull it right on over. I actually even have it labeled as a 12, uh, 12, 12 to four OVA just so we know what it's at, but it is on my 12.3 verify release. So it has a cube offering, but we need these packages to be loaded. So first things first, just follow the knowledge base article. We're gonna read this right down. We're actually going to uh, change our directories real quickly. So I have a cheat sheet on the, the screen here just to save some time. So I'm going to drop into the scripts directory here. If I want to list out this directory, I'll certainly see this uh, install uh, the VSFTP uh, installer shell right here, that script. So once again, you can copy and paste this, or I'll just copy from my cheat sheet, one or the other. So go ahead and run that. Oh, am I missing a syntax here? Maybe I butchered something. There we go. I think, I'm, I think I missed a, ah, I did, I was missing a character. S versus a D. All right, so it's gonna go ahead and load all the packages for us for the, the FTP package that we need. So port 21 to be able to accept these files from Cube, Cube iOS. Cisco Unified Border Element, that is. And in a moment, we will be, we will, in a few minutes, we will be heading over the Cube to solidify everything. But first things first, we need to make sure these packages are installed. So we're at this point right now, installing the FTP package. So just give that a moment or two, and then we will navigate down, um, down a couple directory paths to uh, run a, an ownership update script as well. So let's give this a moment or two. This should be wrapping up momentarily. There we are. Okay, so the VSFTPD is installed. So we are going to go ahead and then just uh, segue down a few extra directories down to the service ownership directory. And I should have this script, this update verify service ownership shell script in here, which there it is right there. So I'm going to call upon it just as the knowledge base article right next door signifies. All right, and then I should actually probably be able just to double check something very briefly on one of my data directories just to make certain that the ownership did take hold. So for instance, I'll just do an LS and verify app is the ownership that I want these to be owned by. Okay, good. Once again, in the newer OVAs, this will already be done by default, but this is on the older OVAs prior to 12.3 moving or further moving forward with uh, the queue deployment on those style of OVAs. Okay, so now we actually have our FTP suite loaded. We've changed our ownership. So we've got the verify app user labeled all over our data directories, just like we like. So now from this, we will want to uh, jump into the, the verify UI. So I'm going to jump into there real quickly. We will come back to this page. So in my dot uh, .190 lab here, it's a complete shell as I mentioned, but it does have the requirements needed, the licensing as well as the version of Verify. So as long as this lab hasn't kicked me out, I should be able to log back in here or access the cube cluster configurations and we'll run through a quick config. 
hopefully with a little bit of breadcrumbs from my browsers. Okay, this doesn't look as promising as it should. I figured it kicked me out at time. Oh. I'm just going to log back in here real briefly, dive right into that cube section. We'll configure a cluster so that it can create the corresponding home directories that we're going to need for these FTP users, and we'll create those in a moment as well. So we're going to go to cube iOS on the shell system here. <clears throat> no cluster to find. We'll go ahead and add one. Uh, definitely, we can kind of follow the, you know, the documentation as far as, you know, how to deploy and the cluster definitions within the verify UI. Pretty straightforward right here. I actually am going to use this Cisco 2901 cube as my test, but a lot of this stuff is pretty straightforward and and uh, similar to what you've seen probably with the call manager deployments. So I'll just use a uh, mat test. I'll keep my enterprise name. It happens to be this, this host name. <laughs> I ran through this last night, so thankfully I have breadcrumbs here. 192 is the cube IP. I'm going to want to mirror uh, the host file directory, and we make mention in it uh, as well in the, in the documentation here for the home directories. Pardon me, with the QBIOS. With the correct permissions, correct? Because we will we will want to have the uh, the FTP user mapped back to the uh, the corresponding uh, data directory. So, rule of thumb that we that we uh, like to abide by is for each uh, cube deployment installation within Verify, we like to set up the the user and the uh, the dir home directory path for it. Uh, something similar to the the host name reference of the cube itself. Now I can't play with hyphens or at symbols and stuff like that, so I've abbreviated and dropped off the hyphen one. But this will be the data directory it will create. There's a local MySQL built in. I'll run with a cube database name, keep forever flags. Okay, those are all fine. Let's go ahead and save this. And we'll go ahead and create the database and those directories within Verify. So we'll activate this. Everything is local on the OVA. One-stop shopping. And the newer ones, obviously, will have SFTP and FTP, as well as the app, the OS, and My MySQL. Okay, so we're, we're enabled here. Our, here is our directory path for cube to send data to us. Now we actually need to go ahead and make sure that um, we have an FTP user that we can map back to this home directory properly. Okay, so I'm going to pull over my CLI here for this, for the server here. I'm going to drop myself back momentarily, excuse me. All right, I will need to dive into the scripts directory. I'll show you where that's at. And let me just pull this side by side. Up for everyone's eyes. We're walking through the FTP portion right here. This is what we're running through right now. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to navigate into the scripts directory and we'll need to call upon another script so that we can go ahead and build out um, the FTP account within SFTPD on the Verify server. Um, this documentation here um, is just plain general, we're not going to use that. I'm actually going to use something that's, as I just mentioned, that's more specific to the cube host name that I'm programming this guy for. So let me pull, um, I just lost my machine again, here it is. Okay, so we're gonna navigate over there to the scripts directory, just like the knowledge base article signifies. However, I'm actually going to create a, uh, my username as that Cisco 2901 that is synonymous with my cube name. And it fired off very fast. Okay, but what I changed in here was um, well, certainly calling upon the, uh, the script file that's in there to go ahead and create the FTP user. But then I'm also giving it a, you know, its username, its password, and then also giving it its data directory to map it down to. So the application from the cluster UI step did create this directory. It is shared out with the app, with the Verify app account that I do know for certain. So we should be able to write cube files here once um, the FTP is up in line. So that should be good there. So now at this moment, we're going to test the FTP in a couple different facets. We're going to test it locally here from the OVA through CLI, as well as I'll probably use a uh, um, an FTP client as well, like a FileZilla or a WinSCP. So once again, I'm just going to kind of follow these these steps on down the page here. Definitely changing, swapping out the uh, that account though. So if we from the FTP command, we want to open. We want to communicate with the local host. The User account that I created was Cisco2901, password. I can spell properly. Okay, I am logged in. I see a progress directory there, January 19th. That is today, I do believe. All right, I'm just gonna quit this. That kind of 
50% kind of solidifies that the FTP functionality is, is working. Now I will pull over a uh, FTP client. I'll use FileZilla here on my, my uh, 190. Let's drop off the prefix of S, change this account around. Let's go 2901. That is the FTP account that we created within the Linux OVA per that script on the last step. And on port 21 because uh, FileZilla will inherently use 22 secure by default. Okay, that browses me right in. This Cisco 2901 account should have a read-only, well, excuse me, not read-only, should only have access to this one directory that we have programmed for it, and that is the 2901 Cisco branch. For this directory right here, so op verify data Cisco 2901, that is what this is reading. I suppose if I wanted to, I could just uh, throw something over here real quickly if I wanted to, just make sure that there is uploadable transfer via FTP, which there is. So I've tested this kind of two and a half, three ways now. Okay, so we have ver a, ver a pre-existing 12.3 OVA upgra upgraded all the way to, our, to a, a more near release that has the cube offering built in the licensing. We have deployed the, S the FTP suite, which is VSFTPD. Uh, we have also tested its connectivity. We have created a user that has access to a home directory for it so that we can actually take that to the cube. Right, we have tested all of that. Now, actually, it's time to hit the cube. So let me just go ahead and uh, remove the client option here. Let's pull my cube on over, and we should still be able to follow these steps. Pardon me. There we go. Right after the FTP stuff, yet yeah, we segue right into the cube commands. So these are the cube commands. You can certainly take a whole list of them and run them at one time if you like. You can onesie twosie them if you like. We will definitely always want to, you'll definitely always need to update this so that we, the cube knows where it's delivering this data to. Now, th this documentation is certainly pointing at one of our lab systems with a kind of a, a fake um, FTP account. So definitely you'll need to uh, rehash that. I already have one kind of built up here for myself. So I will be using that in a moment. So just pulling these two back to the forefront for our eyes, <coughs> excuse me. Eventually, yeah, the uh, the data for this cube, just to show your eyes, me, is going to be going into that Cisco 2901 folder. Off the data branch, there it is. So it's just sitting in a progress directory. There is the one file that I did upload earlier. And just to not confuse anybody, Actually, yeah, my, my rights are restricted. What am I thinking? We'll leave that there. It's not going to hurt anybody. It's an older file anyways. Okay, so at the cube level, for the cube commands, now I have a listing here of them. I can certainly just issue them all out in accommodation so that they can just run through them immediately, or I can just kind of onesie twosie them. I will grab the top three first, which are going to be, you know, enable configure T or, or configure terminal and the GW accounting, which needs to be set up for the cultivation of kubectr. And it probably would help if I log back in. I'll tell you that cube clusters don't like inactivity for much long. All right, back in. Okay, so I'm going to I'm already in enable mode. So we'll go with configure terminal and the GW accounting. So I'm just gonna grab two commands off my cheat sheet. That's gonna be the configure terminal and GW accounting. Just paste them. And we're now in the configure option here. We're gonna issue for GW hyphen accounting file. Next option here is going to be the primary FTP deliverable. So in my lab here, I'm just going to, it will be in plain text, obviously. The password will be in plain text until it's actually written in cube memory. And if I pull my cursor to the right, to the left, excuse me, you'll see all the findables here. So the primary FTP, the dot 190, which is my new shell lab here. CDR is the prefix that we'll want to see. Username is going to be the Cisco 2901 that I created within the Verify OVA, and then the password I made pretty simplistic. Definitely stay away from the uh, the at symbols and passwords on Cube. Bad things happen to good people. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and fire that off. It'll take that configuration, and I'm going to run the, the last four, the max uh, CDR flush timer and close timers, as well as the formats. So the bottom four, I'm going just to rattle off all at once there. That is in there, and now we're going to go ahead and end this and write it to memory. Right, it's going to build that configuration. Certainly, we're going to show the flash in a moment or two to see it, to actually show this uh, this run configuration. So we'll do an NSH run, which all of these commands, pardon me, 
are towards the bottom of this knowledge base article as well. Here are some OVA troubleshooting commands, but also the cube command. So if we need to look at flash, I'm going to run this command right now just to look at the, uh, the file accounting configuration that we just built in the cube. So let's pull that back to the forefront. So sh run pipe begin gw two files. That space gonna do me in. It did. There we are. Okay, so there at the very top, you will see our primary FTP to my dot one ninety. Here's my username, and there's a password that will be encrypted momentarily, and then the other provisions as well as the uh, the flush and the closed timer, as well as the uh, the format types. Okay, so now we're set up, wait, ready for Cube to send data on over to, to verify. I'm going to drop out this command real briefly. And I'm actually just gonna show the flash real briefly and just rattle through this. These are some older ones. Now this is a test router here. These guys are from a few years ago, but the one I'm gonna wanna pick on are more current ones. I think they're from last year anyways but there are things in live flash. Okay, so I've got some 2021 files here. So some CDR Cisco files here on this cube router. So with per some of these cube commands, I can also even kind of test a uh, test the FTP manually. So I can actually run a, a copy command within the cube to kick this on over to verify. And I can pick on one file, I can pick on a slew of files. I could close the timer and flush everything out that's currently being uh, generated within the cube. Well, let's just run with the, uh, the copy command for now. So as I did, I ran through this last night, I'm going to cheat again. So I'm going to issue uh, the copy flash command that looks like this. Of course, it ate some of my stuff up, but as you can see here, it's copy flash, the um, file name in flash, user ID, server, as well as the password there in the middle. So all that is baked in. The .190 host is good. That is the file that I want that should be one of these guys right up here, I believe it's this top one right here from May 25th, May 25th, 26th. That is the file, the dot zero seven one. Mm -hmm. It has copied it. And now I should actually be able to even just either restat the data directory within my OVA to see that additional file and there it is. So this previous file that was there, my processor already ingested and wrote that, wrote that to the, uh, the MySQL database table, but this is the new one that we just copied over. So you can see the, the May 25, 2021, that is the exact file that I just copied over from the cube manually. So this not being a production cube, so data is not gonna be coming flying over to us, but certainly this does solidify that cube can deliver CDR files via FTP to verify. Okay, once again, this does predate the, uh, the newer 12.3 OVAs of verify or later but definitely people that are upgrading from older OVAs can certainly take advantage of uh, this content and um, deploy cube clusters within Verify. All right, a uh, couple other things I may show real briefly will be maybe if I wanna degenerate one manual kind of flush command actually from the, uh, the cube itself. Let me just pull up uh, another bag of tricks I have. And I'm gonna issue a command called, um, where's it? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's going to be the flush command or account, file accounting flush with close. So this will be file accounting. This is just if you wanted to certainly test it right now. Another variable you certainly could do um, that we definitely do during the pl initial deployment. I'll slide back up to the cube commands. Um, now, by default, uh, cube is not delivering data in real time to anybody. It's not even doing the one minute like the call manager, or the CUCM is. It's you no, know, it's an hourly release. So it's not releasing these files until every 60 minutes. But we can certainly issue commands to go ahead and you know and kick it off to to run right now. Uh, also, that timer can be dropped. Excuse me, I'm sorry. The maximum flush timer. The flush timer can be dropped down to say a minute if you like, just to test the connectivity and deliverable of cube to verify via FTP. But uh, once it kind of goes into production, we'll want to go back to the 55 minute of variety so that we don't lose any of the inner linkings on any of the CDR from the cube, which we have definitely seen in the past. So we could certainly leave those alone if you want to, but you could certainly set it to one if you wanted to tr troubleshoot that to see its stat now. Or, last trick up my sleeve here, or we can uh, issue the, uh, the flush, so which would be file hyphen account or ACCT space flush space with hyphen close flushing the CDR data file and closing the file. So in a moment or two, I should be able to restat my OVA again and see actually another file sitting in that data directory waiting to be written into the SQL database. 
and there it is. As today's date on it, January 19th of 2022, that is correct. The May one has already been written in by the processor because it's running on every couple of minutes. It could be lengthened out if need be. Okay. Uh, another thing uh, that I probably didn't make mention of that I probably should have mentioned at the very beginning is, is your OV, Linux OVA, is it connected to the internet? Now, certainly for the cube deployments and the VSFTP and all that good fun stuff, um, if we have access to the internet, can load the packages more easily and keep everything uh, running and running quite smoothly. Now, if it's an offline installation where the server has no access to the internet, um, we have workarounds for that. Certainly reach out to verify support for uh, that assistance. But if you were unaware, you can most certainly from your ver within your verify OVA can certainly, you know, maybe just reach out and ping you know, google.com, for instance. If you can reach Google and get returns, and certainly it's connected to the network, or excuse me, connected to, has access to the internet for future packages that uh, those, those FTP offerings that may need to the OVA. All right. I did run one of these earlier. It took a moment or so, so I'll just give this an extra minute before I wrap everything up. Um, I'm done with the cube for now. Oh, come on now. I know the server has access to the internet, so I'm not certain why this is taking so long to come back, so I guess I'm glad I didn't start with that earlier. All right, well, pulling that to the side, but once you have the, the cube data solidified and getting delivered to, uh, to verify inner frequency, then certainly we can build out, you know, dashboards or corresponding reports that can look in a variety, look in a very varied fashion like this. So what, gauging, you know, capacity utilization, network out of order stuff, abnormalcies, where the calls are, you know, where the calls are being routed to from cube, are they going to the call manager, are they going to teams, to UCCE, certainly a lot of variables that we can certainly report on for that. Uh, lastly, I do want to make mention here that we actually do have a, uh, uh, a cube CDR report package that you can download from our website. So that was the second link I shot out earlier in the uh, the WebEx chat was uh, to the support download page. Now certainly our main installers are right here. But if you comb just a scroll wheel or two, you'll see we have report template options. Here's the UCM, the CCX, but here's Cube. So if you want to, you can certainly download these and actually maybe I'll mimic it right now. Just so everyone can kind of see this. So if I want to, I'm logged into my website now. You have to be logged into verify.com. I'm gonna pull down the Cube report templates. It's a zip, I think there's about five or so report templates in there. We'll unzip these and then we'll load them into the UI just so you can see the ease of use there. Hey, my ping never came back from Google. Interesting. Okay. All right, unzipping this. Too easy there. Just extract that. We'll head over to the call analytics. It'll probably default to one of my UCM clusters I don't have configured yet, of course. We're just gonna use the app launcher here. We'll just dive right into the mat test cube and we'll go right into reports. Everything is completely empty. We're gonna go ahead and import reports and then the unzipped package that I downloaded from the verify.com website, wrong drive. Here they are here, they are unzipped. I will drill into these and select them all. There are seven of them. Now we'll go ahead and import those. And now we have cube report templates for your usual. For, for your usage. So you can certainly copy these, you can modify them. We, we normally recommend you keep these as, as kind of standardized templates and just take copies of these just so that your peers can use these templates you know, later on and they have been modified. But if you have any questions on any of those templates as well, let me just backpedal to my KB here. We also have um, knowledge base articles on all these, uh, these templates. So these five or six templates that we have loaded in here for the cube reportings, you can see uh, summarized usage by peer ID, inbound calls to cube, outbound calls from cube, capacity utilization on the media addresses, top disconnect codes utilization, as well as troubled calls. There's sample report definitions for each one of these. If you wanna click on them, I do believe the page should illuminate an example. Here's an example of one of those structured reports. So certainly feel free to go ahead and use those. Uh, some of them actually have, um, required kind of a content that needs to be modified and some actually don't. So whereas maybe we build these with maybe a media address that is uh, synonymous to us, but is not to you, certainly the knowledge base articles on those will dictate as such. And lastly, I'll show you that. So if I jump into those once more time, so if I drill into, for instance, this one, if I drill into this one, it'll specify that there are optional changes that I could make. So if there are optional changes means um, you'll probably want to replace the IDs that we're using on these screenshots from this KB with something that's more, that's more 
similar, similar to your environment and that's obviously on your network. Um, so some actually will have optional changes, some will actually have required changes as well, where you'll need to swap these out. So please do may, uh, be aware of those. Uh, other than I'm getting a little long, uh, long in the tooth here. So Jim, I do believe I've got, I've covered all the, uh, the pre 12.3 OVA configs for queue deployments. Do we have any questions from the team or the group? Well, you've covered it so well. There are no questions related to queue. Um, <laughs> we did have one just come in sure. uh, through chat there. Are, um, are there UCCE slash PCCE templates? Um, really, we don't support at this time UCCE or PCCE, so we do not have those templates. Um, but uh, we do have the UCCX tem templates, as Matt uh, showed us. That is correct, yes. No support for CCE or, mm -hmm. or PCCE at this time. Yep. We'll give it another minute or two, but I think you touched on licensing. Uh, will a new license be required for Cube? Yes, good question, yes. A, a new license will be needed for Cube. Um, there are some pre, um, some prereqs that are needed in the license key to be able to have uh, the Cube option at the cluster level within the, the Verify UI. So you can re you can certainly reach out to your account manager or support at verify.com for uh, a key to uh, open that up for you and assistance. Uh, uh, another question just popped in from Charles, mm -hmm. more of a Cisco centric question, but what are the limits of cube capacity for sending FTP? Oh. So that's a Quite darker sure. question. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm not 100% certain what the capacity are for cube deliverables. Um, I mean, I definitely know that from the, uh, the, um, the cube flash, you know, the CDR files are to be, you know, written into flash, then that file closed and then delivered to us, you know, or to a third party, you know, hourly if this methodology is configured. Now, as far as, uh, I guess, it's bandwidth, what it allows, I'm not 100% certain, but we can definitely take that offline and get that answered for you if need mm -hmm. be. Yeah, we haven't run into any issues that I'm aware of. As far no, as far as the, as far as the pipe is concerned, delivering mm -hmm. no, we have not. Right. No, we have not. Right. They're rather small files. Mm -hmm. So uh, one other comment for me that I've run into, and I think you have, may have too, with the uh, configuration here, the cube configuration, the database name, uh, it doesn't like special characters or dashes. Oh yes. Uh, especially, I've seen a lot of cube uh, host names with a dash, and we, like Matt said, we kind of mirror that with the database name, but it doesn't like that. So you Correct. can replace the dashes with an underscore. Mm -hmm. With underscores, if, if, if you okay. want to, yeah. In this example, I just left off the hyphen one, but yeah, definitely right. the uh, the under, yeah, the hyphens or a lot of the special characters on the, yeah, on the Cuba directory, home directory pads, as well as well as mainly it's the, uh, it's the FTP user that actually doesn't like it, not so much the path, but so we try to keep it simplistic and uh, and mirror something similar off of the cube, you know, the cube's host name. Okay. Uh, yeah, Charles is a follow-up. Uh, thinking more about CDR limitations on the cube for a really busy setup. Hmm. Yeah, Charles, we could take that offline if you want to open a support we will. ticket. Yeah. We can. We can definitely uh, get with you. On we that. will, because I, th I think Jim and I are now both interested as well as you are. <laughs> <laughs> we will get. Yeah. That. We'll take it offline and get that answered for you, Charles. Thank right. you. I'm a little short on time, so I will steal that ball from you. I'll stop sharing. Yeah, I couldn't stop talking. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I've got the Q and A out of the way, and now it is drum roll to announce the winner. The winner of this week's fifty dollars Amazon gift card is Ronaldo Ramirez. Congratulations, Ooh. Ronaldo. We'll have your account manager reach out to you and uh, go through that. Get that uh, gift card out to you. And so for next week's webinar, we're going to be, or workshop, sorry, we're changing the name from webinar to workshop, so I'm still getting used to that. Uh, we're going to have a quick start guide to UCM call analytics. Uh, but make sure you register for that. We look forward to seeing you. And I want to thank you all for your time and enjoy the rest of the day and the week. Definitely. Thank you all. Take thank care. Bye-bye.